Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great time to be a PC gamer. There are a ton of awesome games that are being released, of course, on the PC platform, including from Sony and Microsoft, but there are also lots of hardware releases to look forward to. AMD have already launched the Zen 5 parts, but of course the X3D variants are waiting in the wings with the 9800 X3D looking very promising indeed. Intel's Arrow Lake CPUs are also debuting and they look pretty interesting, although at the moment, of course, the gaming performance doesn't seem to be quite up there, but they do look pretty strong in terms of content creation and other uh, tasks. But for the GPU, well, we're spoiled for choice. Intel's Battle Mage is still pretty much missing in action, so it seems like it's not going to probably release until next year at this point, but RTX 50 is all but certain to start to launch from January, and the 5090 is looking very impressive. But RDNA 4, which is the focus of this video, is going to be no slouch either. And AMD have actually officially confirmed that the next generation GPUs will almost certainly be uh, debuting at CES. Not only that, the company have officially disclosed that the performance of the GPU in gaming is very impressive, and the ray tracing performance is significantly increased over RDNA 3. So I want to talk to you guys about that, plus some interesting stuff concerning the uh, AI capabilities of these GPUs. Now, I know AI, for many, isn't perhaps the most interesting thing, but don't forget there has been an official disclosure from AMD that they want to improve not only ray tracing upscaling, but also FSR technologies with FSR4 incorporating AI. So we're going to get into all of that plus more right now. Oh boy, there's a lot of stuff to go through here. So I think the first port of call would be the official quote from AMD. And Lisa Su said this during the Q3 2024 earnings call. In gaming graphics, revenue declined year over year as they are preparing for the transition to the next generation of Radeon GPUs based on RDNA 4 architecture. In addition to a strong increase in gaming performance, RDNA 4 delivers significantly higher ray tracing performance and also adds in new AI capabilities. They are also on track to launch the first RDNA 4 GPUs in early 2025. Now, quite frankly, I have an awful lot to say about this, but if I was to go too deep into this, this video would end up being like 30 minutes long. So I'll keep my thoughts brief on the um, quote because we have an awful lot of other things to cover. So the first and most obvious thing that you can kind of take away from this is that the release date is almost certainly going to put the reveal of these GPUs, as most of us expected at this stage, at CES. And we can probably imagine that Q1, you're going to see the flagships launch, and maybe Q2, we'll see the lower end cards, but maybe they'll all drip out in Q1, who knows. It also makes a lot of sense for a lot of different reasons, not least of which, of course, RTX 50's mid-range, at least according to other rumors, and I covered these maybe around a week ago or so, RD, um, RTX 50's mid-range seems to be coming out much faster than what you would normally see with NVIDIA-based GPUs. Typically, there's a, long, there's a larger lag between the flagship cards like the 80 and 90 series, for example, and then the lower end cards like the you know the 60 series but this doesn't seem to be the case this time around and nvidia seemed to accelerate the mid-range offerings and obviously one of the large reasons they would do that is because of competition in that mid-range from the rx 8000 series presumably i mean for all i know it's going to be called i don't know pineapple or something like that but with that said um, there are a couple of other intriguing takeaways. The first is the increase in gaming performance. Now, I'm going to be very interested to see exactly how that plays out in benchmarks. Um, because notice they are separating that from the higher ray tracing performance. We'll get to that in a second. Um, the rumor has been that the high-end N48 flagship GPU would roughly be on par with the 7900 XT or potentially the XTX depending on the direction of the wind, the angle of the sun on the moon, the temperature that's outside, and whether you have given it a cookie that morning. In other words, based on a lot of different factors like resolution and so on. Ultimately speaking, I think that it's quite 
difficult to get an exact performance metric when obviously a lot of these rumors potentially are from older tests or perhaps internal simulations or what have you and ultimately speaking there can be an awful lot of difference what happens with real physical products because of a lot of different reasons not least of which does it hit the appropriate clock frequency is there a bug in the silicon also what about things like the resolution and just a ton of other things so it's going to be very interesting to see what it's capable of um, I will be very intrigued as well to see the pricing of these things. Again, the rumor has been that these cards are going to be fairly reasonable in price. However, when it comes to reasonable and graphics cards in the modern era, I think they mean a little bit different to what perhaps many gamers would hope for. With that said, I think we can all agree that the higher ray tracing performance is essentially expected right now. Mark Cerny, who of course is the lead architect behind the PS5 and PS5 Pro, stated that the PS5 Pro uses RDNA 4 essentially, anyway, uh, for its ray tracing augmentation, and of course we know that that is just better than well, the previous generation consoles. So I think we can all know that, yeah, RDNA 4's improved ray tracing performance is pretty much what we have expected. Also, I think it was Kepler L2 leaked that the ray tracing performance of RDNA 4 is significantly better as well. So again, that does line up pretty well, doesn't it? But you will also notice AI capabilities is listed here as well. I actually uh, um, did a little bit of research on what this could potentially be. I also spoke to a couple of people, and it seems most likely that we're looking at FP8 WMMA. Um, and interestingly, this seems to have actually been referenced in uh, a couple of places. We'll get to specifically what in just a moment, but also, I've, I may have missed this actually, Chips and Cheese actually references this in an article back in January of 2024, so I'll leave a link to their uh, article, of course, in the video description. Um, but basically speaking, if you peruse the official RDNA 3 shader instruction set architecture, and this was released mm, maybe around a year and a half ago, God, this year has gone so fast, um, you can spot uh, on page 73 of 600, so it's quite a light read, but uh, you can see here table 33.wmma instructions. There's a bunch of stuff there, and if you're not a programmer, to be honest, I have a very loose grasp of some programming, but I'm certainly not, you know, probably as good as some of you guys. Um, so if you guys want to provide more context of what some of this stuff is, means in the video uh, sorry in the comments that would be great you can feel free but basically you can see a couple of references here to iu8 and iu4 and basically and the rec to be fair the actual uh, reference does also mention that these are essentially unsigned or signed integers so basically rdna3 for example does support this however um as Chips and Cheese's article does point out, in the, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? My brain is a bit foggy because I'm just getting over kind of a plague. Of, sorry, guys. Uh, because in the LLVM, we actually, uh, it's, uh, it's open source, basically. So you can see a lot of code changes. Um, and it's a really lengthy, uh, it's really lengthy, um, the, uh, obviously the, so the, um, the LLVM has a lot of stuff in it, but you can do just a really quick um, search in the AMD GPU base info.cpp. Again, just rolls off the tongue. Um, and from around 550 in terms of the code path, you can see a plethora, plethora, I tell you, of references with GFX 12. GFX 12, of course, is RDNA 4, and you will see multiple examples here of um, FP18, which are being listed. And those of you who are particularly diligent will perhaps also remember that FSR 4 was formally announced, kind of, by AMD. They didn't really give any indications as to its capabilities, aside from the fact that it's going to be enhanced with dum da da dum dum yeah, you guessed it, uh, AI. So long story short, is this going to be used for FSR 4 
for example well maybe there's also potentially going to be the option for it to run on uh, integer 8 as well unfortunately with AMD because they've not really given this information it's speculation I've spoken to several people no one really knows anything about FSR 4 I'm not going to lie to you guys I've, I've asked around no one knows anything about it there are a lot of potentials actually um, there's a really interesting thing that I'm going to potentially go through at some point. Uh, this is another official uh, thing from AMD, and it was actually announced um, on GPU Open. And it's neural super sampling and denoising for real time path tracing. This is actually a really complicated uh, article, or should I say, document. So. Um, this is basically research that AMD are using, so whether perhaps this is going to be incorporated uh, in a future variant of, you know, AMD's toolchains for RDNA 4, I honestly don't know. Um, I will leave a link to this, of course, in the video description. There's a number of individuals who were responsible for putting all of this together. And honestly, it's way too complicated for me to go into in this particular um uh, video because it's it's really complicated stuff but basically it's just better denoising and obviously denoising uh just a there's a really simplified explanation of what denoising is if you don't know but when ray tracing is performed in a scene uh generally speaking obviously there are tons of rays which are cast from the perspective of the camera and they bounce around stuff in the scene boing 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 that's a technical term they actually do that trust me they 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 physically hear you hear the boing if you're in the scene believe me um and basically as they're reflecting around um, obviously that is then translated into data which can then be used to figure out how the scene is lit or you know shadows are cast and all that other stuff however just because of how computationally expensive that is basically you have to kind of fill in the blanks because there's just simply not the capability to throw in as many rays as you would need so that data so all of the data is accounted for hopefully that makes a sense so there's a lot of denoising technologies which are already used nvidia does this and of course uh, amd seem to be researching this as well at least a variant thereof now before i close out the video god i'm getting there um, before I close out the video, there is one other thing I'd like to talk to you guys about, and that's a rumor that started, um, well, it actually started with Chip Hell. Now, um, it's kind of interesting because I believe the actual original source was from a Twitter user by the name of Aexarius. I've probably butchered that pronunciation. I really am sorry if I did. But uh, basically speaking, you can see that their version has not got the chip hell watermark. But um, anyway, somehow this got picked up on chip hell and this is a rumor. Now, as you can see here, it is insinuating that that is Narve 48. And I, I Look, this is going to be one of those things where I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say that that is fake. Basically speaking, it's insinuating that, well, first of all, obviously, this is a render. It's not a real image. But um, I, basically what they're saying is that N48 is essentially a chiplet. Um, and you can see here that theoretically it would be two chiplets. Now, if you look at the specification of N44 versus 48, conveniently, they are literally half, at least according to the rumors obviously in reality for all we know there could be a significant difference um but uh, apparently it's roughly half so you have half the number of work group processes and so on and so forth so basically the there was like and i've heard this as well i've had actually a source who swore to me that this is true by the way um several months ago but i didn't report it because i just don't believe it's true but basically i had a source who essentially told me the N48 is quite literally two N44 dies together, basically speaking. But I don't believe this is true. And in this particular case, I don't think this is true for a lot of different reasons. Like the die here would be so small for N48 that I just don't think it would be worth the effort in terms of packaging and other things anyway. Um, this is one of those things where I think I'm right, but I'm happy to take the L if I'm wrong. In other words, like I think It'd be really funny and really cool if I was wrong. Like, I think it would just be freaking hilarious if it really was uh, chiplet-based. 
and I'm, I'm happy to be wrong in this case just because I think it would be absolutely bloody hilarious but I don't think I'm wrong I think this is probably not accurate so there you have it guys I will be extremely interested to see how AMD actually markets the RX 8000 series um, ultimately of course any part can be successful in the market it comes down to whether there's bugs in the drivers what software is like and of course the pricing as well it is a little disappointing to me that AMD did can the high-end variants which would have most likely competed with the likes of the RTX 5080 and potentially even the 5090 but you know what if we have a new Polaris situation if you guys remember back to let's say the RX 480 and perhaps even the 580 I think we can all agree that they were pretty interesting parts in their own right and they were also extremely popular and if it happens to get AMD into more PC, well, users' hands, then that's only good in terms of software support. I'm hearing some really good things regarding RDNA 5, and I'll probably cover that in another video. But um, for right now, I think things are looking very good for AMD. I will be extremely curious, though, as I said, to see what the pricing is of these GPUs. So let me know in the comments below, what do you expect the flagship performance of the RX 8000 series to be, you know, in terms of cost and what would you hope for it to be. But that said, I think that's just about it for this video. Take care of yourselves, have an amazing day and stay safe. Bye for now.